You're listening to Innovation for Alpha, where we explore everything at the intersection of healthcare innovation and finance. Through our discussions and interviews, we keep you informed and educated about healthcare innovations, next level venture investing, and everything involving the combination of the two. Hi, everyone. This is Tobin Arthur with the Innovation for Alpha podcast, and we're recording this interview in advance of the Healthcare Impact Investing Summit. We're very excited about this. The executive producer of this summit is my colleague, Mike Shemansky, and he's going to lead the questions today of a really interesting startup that we've gotten to know called Happier, and it's led by Cornelius Palm, who has joined us today. Thanks, Cornelius, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Mike, I'm going to let you uh, take the questions on from here. My pleasure. Thanks, Tobit. So Cornelius and Happier and I met um, earlier this year when they were featured on our mental health uh, pitch club evening, and I was really struck by their product, not only because the cause, the, the problem it's trying to solve, namely chronic pain in pediatrics, but the fact that it's done truly on, has been truly done on a uh, shoestring and is a labor of love for these guys. So Cornelius, maybe you could tell me a little bit about the problem, tell our audience more about the problem that you're trying to solve and how you're attempting to do that. Sure. So there are 29% of young people living with chronic pain. I'm myself living or have been living in my teenage years with chronic pain and Nicola, my co-founder, is still living with migraine. And that is like the personal problem that we try to solve for the next generation. And, and why, so why is it that in pediatrics that that chronic pain then is unsolved? I mean, you're living with it now. Clearly it's awful, but yeah. why is it different for kids? Yeah, so for, for young people, it's absolutely under-recognized, under-researched, under-funded, under-treated. Like there's a, there's a whole, probably a whole um, book to write about why it is bad for young people. Well, give, um, us, the, give us the headers of the first four chapters of that then. <laughs> yeah, so probably like w- nobody would earn any more money if young people would grow up resilient and would like know how to deal with chronic pain. So, so I think wh- where it starts, why, why in young people chronic pain is, pain is especially underrecognized is because it's very much stigmatized. They, they are not talking about it. They are usually introverted people. And then like the, the medical community is also li- looking at it from a biological perspective. So they are usually then just treating it with pharmaceuticals and like hoping that it will go away such as acute pain would go away. Right. So it would kind of be nice if we weren't just drugging our kids with opiates like that. That would be a nice start. then. Exactly. So we, we have like um, a component of three layers to treat chronic pain. And one is the biological and that has their reasons. Like pharmaceuticals are like working not so good in young people. So it's way less in young people. But then there's the emotional and the social side as well that we have to look at. Right. So how do you guys address those second two uh, functions? Yes, yeah, so we are starting especially on the emotional side. So we see young people with chronic pain, they experience this physical symptom, but there's way more to it. Young people are experiencing way more often mental health problems if they are experiencing chronic pain. So there's anxiety and depression often as a comorbidity. Got it. And uh, I would imagine then if you, are, if you are able to treat those emotional symptoms, does it have impact on the use of pharmaceuticals as well? the efficacy, which is strong in cognitive behavior therapy, will lead also to adopting cognitive behavior um, therapy and preventative options as the number one line of treatment. Got it. So your goal is to either delay the onset of pharmaceutical treatment, circumvent it altogether, or at the very least, uh, enhance it. Yeah, it, it means that we are rather preventing than treating the acute symptoms only. Talk to me a little bit about the actual sure. solution. Yeah, 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 young people can put in like their symptoms that they are used to, to, like they have to, for example, if a young person has migraine, they have to keep a headache diary. And that's then the medical side, the disease side. And then what we do on top of that is like we monitor the mental uh, health. So how are you feeling right now? And how is it affecting, what is affecting your, um, your mental well-being? And what can you do to become happier? And we, we, are, we are doing this um, by matchmaking then uh, short CBT exercises and skills to preferences, personalities, and the disease. How is it that you're actually doing that? Like, meaning, like, 
I assume that like, what is this? What is the product that you're using? It's not a diary that you're just having them write down in a notebook. Ah, yes. Right? <laughs> um, so young people are, are receiving a mobile app where they can uh, first set up their profile. They, um, we, are, we are looking not at a disease, we are looking at a dragon. So we are using a strong gamification and storytelling aspects um, which they have to tame. So they start to communicate with their chronic disease, which will probably stay for the whole life with them. But by getting to know it better, you can communicate and become more resilient and strong. So far we have developed the web app and this has been integrated in the association in, of migraine in Ireland. People are using it and we will build up on that. Yeah, but so you do have some data of other people using it in the past. I, I remember that you had some engagement statistics that were pretty remarkable. Yes, like the, the engagement was with um, like user tests that we did like from the mobile side. And we are like also, we have now established like the patient board um, where young people and the parents, they give us feedback on a weekly basis. And with the mobile app, which is now in the Play Store, this is only uh, tested internally. But there we, see, there we see that like the hinges of first data are, are pretty optimistic and like we can build on, on that layer. Mm -hmm. So one thing as I'm listening to the story, and it sounds really compelling, and, and it sounds like you're uncovering things that traditional medicine perhaps is overlooking. Mike often asks, what's the next step? Where are you guys headed? What do you need for the balance of this year? And how can our community help, whether that's with capital, if that's with trials, it sounds like, you know, more users, what are the key metrics for you guys? Yeah, so like, on a, on a very short term, we are completely focusing on the D2C facing product right now. But then I need more validation on the business to business side as well, because we see that like reaching large scales of patients is done through like those routes. And yeah, as you mentioned, we are looking for uh, validation business models and we want contacts, first pilots, partnerships with any kind of institution, um, especially from the US. Where we, where we look at hospitals, where we look at insurances, self-insured employers, like anyone who has like access to those kind of institutions would be of a tremendous help. So we, we have started a community since 2019. We started on Facebook with mothers, now young people. We have this patient advisory board. We have um, charities who help like engage with the right patient group. And that helps a lot in like spreading the word of mouth, getting referrals and having like a solid base that, that keeps the ball rolling. So yeah, one of the aspects that we had spoken about before was the fact that you guys are European based. Yeah. Right? And as a result, trying to penetrate the bureaucracy of a state owned system for a small company, while we can sing the concerns or the praises or whatever you like of single payer socialized medicine. The fact is, is that now if you want a new product approved, you have to go through a state-based organization in order to get approval. Now, the bureaucracy of that must be challenging, to say the least. Uh, absolutely is. And that, that as well is like why we start D2C as, um, from, from the start. Like, right. um, like, like focusing on well-being, focusing on like things that we can do before becoming a therapeutic um, device and having built in kind of the capabilities of doing clinical trials cheaper right away and digitally where we have like symptom diaries and all that what we need to ask in a clinical trial anyway how has been your uh, interaction with us based advocacy groups actually very open like we we have been seeing um, but but we have been seeing like especially from the english speaking uh, advocacy and charity groups that they all are engaging very open. So we, we saw with Migrant Island, with the National Migrant Institute from London, and then the US-based way larger charity groups, that they are like um, very open to, to do something and to innovate, whereas the more conservative German-speaking um, routes have been more difficult to build up the trust and they, they just keep way longer. Okay. Charity groups, they have that need unfulfilled yet to provide something for young people with chronic pain. So we see adults are usually covered and then this digital virtual phase of young people with chronic pain is not, not fulfilled yet. And we hope that we can be that phase.
So, 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 the, so the last thing was that you were, you were mentioning we need a like smart mobile um, device, and you're absolutely right. It's, it's one of the number one pain th points that we have at the moment as well. Like, why is it only like the web app? But so far they are accessing it through like the Safari or like through the browser, and we know that we have to come up with the mobile app. It, it's there already in the Play, Play stores, but we are. Cornelius, um, as you think through the balance of this year, what are the? So it sounds like capital is important because you can you can accelerate things like developing native apps yeah. um, but if you had to list you know the top three things um, that you need between now and the end of the year what would those be like at the moment i'm only like always saying one thing it's always the business model validation and we need those first partners for the pilot i know that the mobile app will be done by um by definitely the pilot start, but but latest end of August, where like we can open it up to a broader mass, and where where we have this um, like mobile app ready. Um, but the number one thing is actually like the, the B2B partners to start the pilots and like to get the first acceptability and efficacy um, data in. Um, so because we are working with storytelling and engaging young people in a playful self management, we want us to be remembered as the ones who um, train migraine or chronic pain tamers, people who um, make a whole generation resilient, who have that passion and this perseverance to like keep keep going, um, even though like this is a very daunting and large topic. Um, I, I think I think with Happier Health, what we are doing is we're doing two things. We're making the experience and the access better and easier. And that is exactly what I want others to, to understand. We're not solving the whole chronic pain space, but we are providing like a low intensity, fun solution for young people that they actually use. And I think that is like a huge gap that, that pediatric pain management is facing. That's great. Well, let's leave it there for the moment. We're really excited to feature the company at this Impact Summit. You guys are doing great work. It's a really compelling uh, idea. See you again soon for the next episode of Innovation for Alpha. Make sure to go to Innovation for Alpha for access to prior episode links, show notes, and other valuable resources. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before making any investment decisions, please consult with a professional. This show is copyrighted by Angel Indie Media, and written permission must be granted before syndication or rebroadcasting.